Now at noon, Razorback basketball is all the buzz on this Wednesday that comes after last night's big win over Auburn. A look at the celebration in Fayetteville coming up. Plus, more states are dropping mask mandates amid a drop in the number of new COVID cases. More on that and a look at the latest numbers here in Arkansas. We're recognizing Black History Month coming up a little later. We'll introduce you to three sisters who are using their passion for hair to educate others. We're in the middle of the Winter Olympics, of course. Figure skating is one of the most popular events, and a group here in Arkansas is reminding us it's never too late to take the ice. Their story coming up at 1220. Glad you're with us. I'm Michael Aaron, and we are glad to see such nice weather out there. Beautiful blue skies in the 60s. Meteorologist Nathan Scott standing by with a look at how long this sunshine should last. Nathan. Good afternoon, Michael. Yeah, we are seeing temperatures well above average for this time of year. A taste of spring in the air. If you step outside right now, look at these numbers. 67 at Little Rock. It's 64 in Cersei, 64 in Hot Springs, 66 in Camden. Lots of blue sky, lots of sunshine, just a gorgeous middle part of the work week taking place. This morning, we stayed primarily above freezing for most locations. Russellville, you dropped down to 28. It was 25 in Clinton, and we've got a little bit of a breeze out there, but still, it is delightful anywhere in central Arkansas. Highs today, they're going to top out into the upper 60s to lower 70s across the board. Tomorrow will be a little bit cooler. We're dropping down to the upper 50s, low 60s. Then we're back up to 70 on Friday. However, going to the weekend, I've left that off the board because we do have some significant changes. It's going to turn much cooler. I'll let you know how cool it's going to get and our next chance of rain coming up. Nathan, thanks. Weighing public exasperation and declining COVID cases, more governors are dropping mask mandates. New York is the latest one. Other states are also planning to loosen restrictions. But as Bradley Blackburn reports, CDC guidance has not changed, especially on masking in schools. New York is the latest state to end mask mandates for most indoor public places. Given the declining cases, given declining hospitalizations, that is why we feel comfortable to lift this in effect tomorrow. Governors across the country are expressing a desire for a more normal way of life. Dropping the most visible public health measure comes as average COVID case numbers are down 69% from a peak of more than 800,000 on January 15th. But the CDC says other metrics are still too high. Our hospitalizations are still high. Our death rates are still high. So as we work towards that and as we um, are encouraged by the current trends, we are not there yet. The CDC continues to recommend universal masking in schools regardless of vaccination status. School mask mandates will expire soon in New Jersey and Connecticut, despite the CDC guidance. In many areas of the country, it's up to local school authorities. For Indiana, it's definitely too soon. It's great that our numbers are coming down, but we're basically looking at where we were at the beginning of December, and that's still really high. Another reminder the pandemic's not over. The youngest Americans aren't yet eligible to be vaccinated. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. And New York's governor says the state will revisit the school masking issue in the beginning of March. Los Angeles County, the most populous in the nation, is still weeks away from lifting an indoor mask requirement there. Here at home, we're starting to see cases tick back up after last week's winter storm. Uh, the state reported close to 3,000 new infections yesterday. We're also seeing significant jumps in our death toll. Another 28 Arkansans have died from COVID. That brings the state's total to just below 9,900. We're seeing some positive trends, though, at the same time, our active cases and hospitalizations are decreasing every single day. Right now, 30,000 people are dealing with the virus. More than 1,300 of those are in the hospital. Despite that progress, many are still suffering from the after effects of COVID. We told you a few months ago about a team of Arkansas doctors that may have identified a possible cause for those patients known as long haulers. Right now, they're working on six different projects related to the study. Some of those include collecting samples from long haulers to check their antibody levels. They're also having patients complete a survey about their symptoms, so they connect that and the antibody and similar symptoms all together. Then we'll ask a subgroup of that of those people that have filled in the survey to donate blood and see if they have antibodies level levels of this ACE2 antibody. That'll allow us to tie this whole thing together. 
The group asked for a grant that could help fund these studies, specifically future ones that could lead to the possible treatments. Dr. John Arthur, who you heard from right there, says that that cure could come within a year if they're successful. If you'd like to take part in future research for long haul COVID patients, you can register through the link at the bottom of your screen. We've also posted it inside this story on THV11.com. Lawmakers are trying to avoid a government shutdown this month. The House passed a bill last night to extend funding through March 18th. It's set to expire in nine days, but Congress is out of session next week, so the Senate is expected to vote on the measure soon. Lawmakers say they're working on a larger bill to address spending through September, which is the end of the fiscal year. Passing that bill has become even harder thanks to a major disagreement in the Republican Party over the January 6th attack. Senate uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has rejected a party resolution referring to those events as legitimate political discourse. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. McConnell also criticized the Republican National Committee for censuring Wyoming's Liz Cheney and Illinois' Adam Kinzinger for serving on the House Select Committee investigating the insurrection. The issue is whether or not the RNC should be sort of singling out members of our party who may have different views from the majority. That's not the job of the RNC. The RNC is now clarifying its comments about January 6th, saying in part, violence is not legitimate political discourse, whether in the U.S. Capitol, US Capitol or in Democrat-run cities across the country, end quote. But it's standing by the decision to censure Cheney and Kinzinger. In 2021, more than 2,000 crashes happened in Arkansas work zones, resulting in 16 deaths. Now, Arkansas State Police and Highway Police are banding together to keep work zones safe, especially for construction workers. The initiative is called Slow Down, Phone Down. It highlights two simple things we can all do out on the road. Now, this new push comes after two RDOT employees were killed along state highways recently. RDOT says this is not meant to be a gotcha campaign. That said, you will see more law enforcement in work zones along state highways. RDOT officials say one life lost is too many. I mean, our construction workers and the people that we contract with, they go out every day and they are risking their lives to do these jobs to keep our roads safe. RDOT says it does what it can to keep employees safe, but emphasize roadside safety is a partnership. If you're in a work zone and are pulled over for speeding, the fine doubles. I don't think we'll ever get tired of this video, will we? <laughs> no, a historic win for the Arkansas Razorback men's basketball team as they take down number one Auburn at Bud Walton last night. That's the first time they've ever beat a number one team in that arena. It's also the first time in almost 40 years the Hogs have beaten a number one team at all. And it all happened in front of a packed house. Fans have been sharing their stories about the game all morning on social media, but we want you to send them our way. Maybe it was your first game or your hundredth. Maybe you took your kids. Who knows? Maybe you're the fan that caught Coach Musselman's shirt after the game. Whatever it is, send your stories to this number right here, 501-376-1111. And if you have pictures, you better believe we want to see those too. A group of sisters is, is using hair to teach others about black history how they're spreading their message coming up at 1215. Plus, Valentine's Day is less than a week away. Time flies, huh? But not everyone is feeling the love this year. Don't worry, we've got a fun way you can still celebrate after the break. Nathan. Many locations will hit 70 degrees out there this afternoon. We'll do it again on Friday, but the weekend, temperatures tumble down to where they should be for this time of year. I'll have more on that and talk about the latest burn bans in effect for parts of the state next.